Welcome back, welcome back. In this one, I need you guys to understand that Fritzing, the program I might be using for this, is not the only software out there. Fritzing does two things. It, it allows you to create your circuits using a breadboard looking system, and you can also do a traditional schematic like a circuit diagram. So that's what I like about it. It's not free anymore. So what I've done, I've Googled a few free ones. I've found a few free ones. I will put all these links in the description. So please go there and have a look at them. You can install them on your own PCs, test them out. And if you do like them, tell your teacher or your IT department to have them installed for the exam. Again, completely free, so it shouldn't be an issue. The good thing is that it has quite a few components already built in. But the really good thing is that you can go and find the stuff that you need if it's not built in. So for example, I know I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi Pico, and I know that the Raspberry Pi Pico is not available in Fritzing yet. So when you, when you go to parts, you can scroll all the way through, you can search, it won't be present. To be able to get the Raspberry Pi Pico in there, I'm just going to quickly show you how this works. So Pi Pico specs, I'm going to go search for that. And I think it is actually located on the data sheet given by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So go to the Raspberry Pi website, Go to Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm going to go to data sheet for the Raspberry Pi Pico here. And in the data sheet, I'm going to search for Fritzing, F-R-I-T-Z-I-N-G. When I search for Fritzing, it's going to allow me to download the specific Raspberry Pi Pico for Fritzing so I can import it and use it as a component. So I can scroll down, I can just do control F to search, and I'm going to type F-R-I-T-Z. I press search, and here I go. It tells me Fritzing. So this is under the section 1.1, Raspberry Pi Pico design files. And I go down to where it says Fritzing, a Fritzing part for use in example breadboard layouts can be found here. I'm going to click on where it says here. That's the blue URL, so that's linked to a website. When I click on it, I think it's going to start downloading straight away. That's right. So if you guys want access to it, you go to this website. I'm going to put this in the description as well. Let me copy it from now and paste it here. And this is going to be the Pi Pico uh, FRT Fritzing layout. You're going to want to import this into your Fritzing software. So I'm going to go to Fritzing. I'm going to click on that tiny down arrow with the lines in it. You might not be able to see it clearly on my screen because of this weird resolution. But I'm going to click on that, and it's going to say Import. Now, I already have this component on my PC, but when you click on Import, it's going to come up with a browse window. And if I go to Downloads, because that's where my most recent one is, I'm going to click on where it says Pico R3 Fritzing Part. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click Open. I should get an error because I've done this before. But if you have not done this before, you should not get an error. Oh, I don't have an error. Perfect. Okay, so my part's already there. So I can now go ahead and use this component on my breadboard or in a schematic. And the way that works, you go over to breadboard. Um, you scroll down on your mouse to zoom out. You scroll up to zoom in. I'm going to drag and drop this component onto here like so. So that's what the Raspberry Pi Pico looks like on the breadboard section. I'm going to show you how to get another part as well, actually, because I know I'm going to be using a hall sensor. I went and I Googled already hall sensor for Fritzing. So I'm going to close that tab, and I believe it was this one here. All I had to Google was the name of the component you want, um, Fritzing. So let me go back. And again, I did um, hall sensor Fritzing, and I got the website that I just had open. I'll share that in the description as well. Let me go next let me copy this and put it in the thing now sorry about this section of the video but i just wanted to make sure i have everything hall sensor fritzing paste that there okay so now all i have to do well let, let's figure this part out together because i've never done this one this specific component before i'm going to go to download it says verify capture to download i'm just going to click i'm not a robot because i'm not and let's see what happens next okay here we have the file downloaded it's a zipped file so I'm going to go to my Downloads folder from my Windows browser. I'm going to go to Downloads here. I am going to right-click on that. I'm going to go to Extract All. If you're using Windows 7, 8, 10, you might see something slightly different. This is what you guys will see. So for people on Windows 11, you can go to Extract All straight away. For other people, this is what you might see. Still the same process. Go to Extract All and click Extract. And that should pop up when it's finished. Here we go. 
double click in there and we should have a file perfect so the file is actually in there the way it should be i'm going to go back to fritzing i'm going to go to the right hand corner again where i had the first thing where i had to go to import the first thing click on that i'm going to go to import i'm going to try and zoom in as much as i can on that area i'm going to go to downloads again because that's where i have my file stored so if you've downloaded stuff and saved it elsewhere that's perfectly fine go there i'm going to go to uh, the folder i extracted double click on that double click on that and here i have my hall sensor here now you don't have to do this method if you want to use a different program and you don't need a pretty circuit diagram um, on a breadboard and all that you could just do a normal schematic in any program for example the raspberry pi pico has 40 pins so you could just do a rectangle with 40 pins going in and out in and out in and out and you could just do it that way but because this looks really pretty i like this so i'm going to use this so this is going to be my hall sensor here that's what it looks like I know I'm going to need some LEDs as well, so I'm going to go to the search icon. I'm going to type LED. I'm not worried too much about the, the value of the LED now because I can always change it. I just need to quickly grab something. Here we go. So let me just grab a red LED and let's see if I can find a green one. Okay, I don't see a green one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this one. Control highlight it by dragging over it. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. It comes over here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to find a way to see if I can change the color of this from red to green. So I'm going to leave it as it is for now. Then I'm going to go back to the search bar. This time I'm going to type a resistor, R-E-S-I-S-T-O-R. -S -S I know I'm going to need at least two resistors. Um, I need to go and double check what value resistor is needed for the hall sensor if one is needed. I'm going to grab, what's this, a 220 ohm? Yeah, that's fine. Let me just grab a 220 ohm. Again, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it because I know I'm going to need two of them. So I'm just trying to put everything I need on screen straight away before I make a start. The next thing I need, I need a buzzer. B-U-Z-Z-E-R, search. Any buzzer you find is fine. I just need a simple one. So I'm going to use, yeah, that one is fine. I know I'm going to need, what did I say, a push to close button? Button, let's look. Let's just type button in and see what comes up. So this is a button I've chosen there. What else do I need? I could go back to my parts list. In your document, you're gonna have your parts list, obviously, that's what you should be working from. Mine is all the way down in activity three, I believe, or activity two, here we go. I've got my Raspberry Pi, I've got my PC, uh, LCD, there we go. So I need an LCD as well. So LCD. Let's see, I need a 16 by 2 LCD. I actually don't know if this has an I2C adapter. Yeah, this is the LCD I want. Looks more or less like the one we have here. What else am I going to need? I'm going to need an LED. I have that I2C adapter. Let's see if they have I2C adapters. I2C. If they don't, I might have to go look for this as well. So I couldn't find an I2C LCD adapter. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to simply Google Fritzing I2C LCD. Now again, if you're using a different piece of software, you won't, you probably won't even need this. You could just get um, a box, a rectangle, connect all the inputs and outputs from the LCD onto whatever box you've created, and that could be your I2C. Because again, this is just a, a visual representation of what the circuit should look like. There's going to be no schematic testing, so the, so you don't have to simulate the circuit. I had to go to GitHub to find one, so I haven't tried this one yet. But all I did again was I typed in Fritzing I2C LCD. And this was the one that seemed to be downloadable. The previous one I downloaded was a different file type. So this is a fritzing one. I'm going to click on download again. It goes to my downloads folder. I'm going to go back to fritzing. I'm going to go to the import section again, top right hand corner of the program. I'm going to go to import and I'm going to go to downloads. And yep, there we go. I'm going to click on LCD screen 16 by 2 I2C. So let's open that and see what comes up. I'm going to click and drag this onto here. Ooh, this already has the I2C thing attached to it. Hmm. As I wasn't able to find the I2C adapter anywhere, again, I'm not going to sit here and create one. I'm going to use this LCD that has the four pins instead of the original one. I'm going to leave the original one here just so I can explain how it converts it, but I'm not going to sit here and create a new component myself. Next, we have the hall sensor, which is fine. I have push to close button, that's fine. I have a buzzer and I have a 220 ohm resistor. I just chose that value at random because that's typically what you would need. Now you will, you would have to do a voltage drop calculation to figure out the exact value of the resistor needed. 
But when I did my calculation, it was like 100 um, ohms. If I go for 200 ohms, that simply means that there is, um, the LED won't be as bright and that's perfectly fine for this application because it's not dependent upon how bright the LED is. So I think I have more or less everything I need. All I need to do now is find a way to connect all of these things and that's it, my circuit's finished.